Plots that real life creates are sometimes more incredible than the most inventive fiction. This case, which gains such wide publicity due to its similarity to the plot of a famous thriller, is yet another confirmation. Because even in the most unimaginable horror movies, one can find more meaning than in the life of this seemingly ordinary family. The Maguid family, is a typical middle-class family living in the province of Cotabato in the Philippines. Cruz Maguid is a teacher for senior classes in a school, while his wife Lavella holds the position of a primary school director. Cruz and Lavella were happy parents to their 18-year-old daughter, Crisol Gwen, and 16-year-old son, Crisol Louis, affectionately known as Boy Boy. Louis was excelling in his studies, with dreams of becoming a lawyer. He was the person others sought out with their problems because he always had the right words to say and knew how to uplift a friend. Gwen, like her brother, was a very popular teenager. She attended preparatory courses at the university and planned to pursue a career in medicine. In her free time, she participated in beauty pageants and sports competitions. In other words, Gwen had it all, loving and caring parents, beauty, intelligence, and a wonderful personality. She also possessed an incredibly kind heart. It was precisely because of her kindness that, in July 2021, the Maguid family experienced an addition. But not a baby, rather another teenager. During a family gathering, Gwen met a 17-year-old girl named Janice, who had been helping either the relatives or friends of the Maguid family to care for their two young children. The two girls quickly became friends, and Janice shared with Gwen that she was an orphan, practically homeless, and under the care of authorities. She expressed her desire not to be with the children anymore and dreamt of living with Gwen. Compassionate Gwen asked her parents to allow Janice to move in with them, and surprisingly, they agreed. Being teachers, they felt the need to help children, especially those in need. Moreover, they were genuinely afraid that if they didn't accept Janice into their family, something bad might happen to her, and she might even be forced into undesirable circumstances. Cruz and Lavella couldn't bear to let that happen, so in July 2021, they essentially adopted Janice. They not only welcomed her into their family but cared for her as if she were their own daughter, assisting her with her studies and even discussing her future college plans. Of course, there were difficulties at the beginning. Within the first month of Janice moving in, the family's 10,000 pesos, approximately 15,000 rubles, went missing. The money was quickly found hidden in Janice's backpack. When confronted, she tearfully apologized, and Gwen pleaded for her to be given a second chance. Understanding that Janice wasn't accustomed to this life and couldn't resist the temptation to take the money, Cruz and Lavella forgave her. Surprisingly, after this incident, the bonds in the family became even stronger and better. Gwen grew attached to Janice, caring for her as if she were a sister. Even Louis gave up his room and slept on the couch in the living room so that Janice could have her own bedroom. Surrounded by love and care, Janice blossomed and reciprocated the affection within her new family. On December 10, 2021, at 2.58 p.m., Cruz Maguid was fixing something at the school where his wife worked when he received a call, urgently telling him to return home because burglars had broken into their house. It took him about 17 minutes to rush home. He swung open the gate, and ran to the front door. Near the entrance, he found a blood-soaked blanket and a knife. He called out for his son, but there was no response. Cruz turned the doorknob to open the door, but it was locked. He then rushed to the back of the house, continuing to call for his son and daughter. Another door was also locked, so he had to break it down. Entering from the kitchen to the living room, he was stunned to see the bodies of his children lying in a pool of blood. His daughter was just a few steps away from her room, covered in bruises and knife wounds all over her body. Insects were already attracted to her blood. Louis was lying by the front door, bound by his hands and feet, with a gag in his mouth. His body also had multiple stab wounds, which seemed to have been inflicted recently. Beside Gwen and Louis lay a baseball bat, a hammer, 
and broken bottles. It is difficult to imagine the anguish the father felt finding his children in such a state. But he knew that there was another child, his adopted daughter, still inside the house, so he continued to search the rooms, fearing to find another lifeless body. Suddenly, the girl appeared, coming out of her room. Cruz recalls that she looked terrified. Her hair was wet, and she said she didn't hear his cries because she was in the shower. Cruz found her behavior strange but assumed that people react differently in shock, perhaps trying to dissociate themselves from reality by engaging in routine activities. In any case, Cruz didn't have time to dwell on it. He needed to call the police and inform his wife of the horrific incident, that someone brutally killed their son and daughter. Fortunately, there was a survivor of the attack, and when the police arrived, they promptly interviewed Janice. Once she regained her composure, she recounted that three masked men had broken into the house. She witnessed them launching vicious attacks on Louis. Frightened, Janice managed to hide under her bed in her room, trying to remain as quiet and inconspicuous as possible. Despite the fear, she was able to access Facebook and post a message, alerting others that intruders had entered the house. Apparently, someone saw the post and called Cruz, who immediately rushed home upon receiving the distressing news. The cruelty of the crime confirmed the girl's words. Considering that multiple weapons were used in the crime and that the robbers managed to overpower two teenagers, there must have been several killers. Judging by the bruises on Gwen's arms, she fought desperately for her life, but the attackers were too strong. The investigators quickly discovered that the perpetrators had enough time after the murder to clean up the blood and change their clothes in the family's bathroom. They then put the dirty items in a bag and attempted to dispose of it in the canal, but a branch blocked their path, leading to its discovery by forensic experts. However, Janice was clearly mistaken about some things. The pathologist determined that Luis couldn't have been killed first, as his wounds still appeared fresh when the father arrived home, while Gwen's blood had already begun to dry, attracting ants. The police noticed that Janice's room was in great disarray, as if the criminals meticulously searched every corner. In such a case, it would have been impossible not to notice someone hiding under the bed. Moreover, the rage with which the intruders attacked Gwen and Luis puzzled the investigators. Typically, burglars aim to find valuable items and leave the crime scene quickly, rather than attacking teenagers with such unprecedented cruelty especially since they didn't take anything valuable besides the victims' phones. It was also strange that the murder occurred around 2 a.m., but Janice posted a plea for help on Facebook at almost 3 a.m. Why did she wait almost an hour to report the attack on her brother and sister? Why choose a Facebook post instead of calling her parents or the police? She might have been afraid that the intruders would hear her, but it's difficult to imagine being in her position, when it's a matter of life and death and fear grips every inch of your body, how one could write a lengthy post without making any mistakes and even selecting several sad emojis to illustrate her words. In any case, Gwen's boyfriend saw her post immediately and promptly called Janice. She answered, but remained silent, and there was an eerie silence in the background. Shortly after, Janice changed her name on Facebook and eventually deleted the post. However, the main clue to the identity of the culprit lay in the fact that all the weapons used in the crime belonged to the family. The fact that the burglars brought no weapons with them, and the baseball bat, knives, and hammer were all from the family's possessions, raised further questions. Only Gwen and Janice knew where the hammer was, as the Magwads had recently had guests, and Lavella asked her daughters to put it away so it wouldn't be in the way. The baseball bat was lying on the top bunk of Louis' two-story bed, which Janice now occupied. To use the bat, the intruder would have had to go into Janice's room and take it. These are not the places where a stranger unfamiliar with the layout of the house would find such items. Finally, the police lifted fingerprints from the baseball bat and compared them to Janice's, and they matched. The evidence continued to accumulate, pointing to the least likely suspect. Therefore, the police called Janice in for questioning once again. Finally, on December 16, 
When Janice was confronted with all the evidence that contradicted her statements, she confessed to her lawyer that she was the one who killed Gwen and Luis. But how did she manage to overpower two teenagers, aged 16 and 18? She had an accomplice, a 17-year-old boy named Carl, who served in the local church. The police shared screenshots of their conversations with the public, confirming that the murder was premeditated. Janice knew where the items that could be used as weapons were located, and she had everything prepared in advance. Janice admitted that envy towards Gwen and anger towards the teenagers pushed her to commit the murder. After her confession, Janice's friends and acquaintances revealed that she had always been quite two-faced. On one side, she presented herself as friendly, kind, and caring, but behind people's backs, she showed an entirely different side. She allegedly considered the Maguid family to be poor and spoke unfavorably about them. Cruz Maguid later stated, she was envious and insecure, so she resented Gwen. I've heard such things about her character. When she's angry with someone, she seeks to harm them. She dreamed of taking Gwen's place. Perhaps that's why on the day of Gwen and Luis's murder, Janice referred to Cruz and Lavella as her mom and dad. She wanted to be the only daughter in the family, receiving all the attention, care, and possibly money. Such uncontrollable behavior and the crimes she committed led the media to compare her to Esther, the main character of the movie Orphan. It's a thriller about a family that adopts a little girl with an angelic face, who turns out to be a heartless killer. Interestingly, it was one of Janice's favorite movies, and she even asked Cruz to watch it together, but he declined as he had already seen it and didn't like it. However, just like the movie character, Janice wasn't an orphan. Her parents are alive, and besides her, there are three more children in the family. However, her father neglected the family, didn't want to work, and they lived in almost poverty. Janice's parents separated when her mother found work in Davao City, the main port of Mindanao Island. Leaving for work, her mother left Janice under the care of her father. But since he practically didn't take care of the children, Janice was placed under the care of the Department of Social Welfare and Development of the Philippines for eight years. On December 20, 2021, Gwen and Luisa bid their final farewell. The family didn't celebrate the New Year's festivities as they usually did, as it was a family holiday, and they couldn't find joy in welcoming the New Year without Gwen and Luis. We extend our condolences to the parents of the slain teenagers. With new evidence, we are confident that we can achieve justice for their children, said Vice Governor of Cotabato, Emilu Mendoza. What's particularly sad about this case is that the main suspect in the murder of the teenagers is their adopted daughter, whom the family cared for as their own. It's unfathomable to imagine how a 17-year-old girl, who was given a second chance to live a better life with a loving adoptive family, could not only carry out but even conceive such a furious act of murder. Pending trial and sentencing, the accused are under the custody of the Department of Social Welfare and Development of the Philippines. Cruz and Lavella complained that the official Philippine authorities treat and care for underage criminals much better than they do for the underage victims. Lavella recounted her encounter with the accused during their official arraignment, we saw the criminals who didn't show any signs of remorse. One was properly dressed, in a black long-sleeved shirt tucked into blue jeans, wearing dark glasses, escorted by a social welfare worker and a plainclothes policeman, while the other came with a representative of the official Philippine authorities and their parents. I envied how well they looked, how they were protected. I wanted to confront them face to face or look them in the eyes and ask why. But I could only tightly hold my husband's hand and cry because we couldn't do anything since the law protects them.